right, tonight as we begin, I want to share one announcement. Uh, this Sunday is the quarterly Sunday Ambassadors Lunch, and the whole church is invited to come to that. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you're at home watching, and we'll send another email tomorrow. But if you'd like to come to that, please let us know so we can plan accordingly. And we'll also have a brief uh, update on the missionary efforts in Italy as the church considers possibly supporting uh, the Whitmans and the Ransoms. And so that will be a part of the uh, lunch as well. So we want to encourage the whole family to know that you're invited to come and uh, hope that you're able to this Sunday after the service, the luncheon and the missions uh, information that will be shared. And then we'll share more uh, in the future as well. Uh, tonight we want to start a four-week series on improving your prayer life. And I, I don't think I've ever met anybody, pastor, Christian, missionary, who has ever said, I've reached the pinnacle of my prayer life and I don't need to improve it. Uh, when you think about uh, what prayer is, what God intends, what we should be doing, uh, I trust all of us can always note, yeah, I, I need to keep going down that road of understanding prayer better, praying more, uh, trusting in God uh, through what he has set up and that is prayer. So I want to encourage uh, us as a local church uh, to really make a effort to push, uh, remind ourselves of the necessity of prayer uh, for us as a local church and also encourage individuals uh, that uh, we need to always be on top of praying. And it's easy you know, our tendency is to do what? Well, we can slip back. Uh, we do less, we skip it, we uh, pray only for certain things. And so hopefully through this, it will encourage, remind us of the necessity of prayer and what God intends. And I can base this upon the Word of God, that if you look to improve your prayer life according to Scripture and God's purposes for it, it will change your life. Uh, God will use it. That's guaranteed. Scripture is clear. God has set up the Word of God. He set up prayer as the avenues of the way of tying into the power and the grace of God. Therefore, if God's people pray, you can expect God to work. And so I, I trust this will be encouragement in this way. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, uh, mentions uh, the disciples are watching Jesus, probably listening to him pray. And we know it leads into the uh, Lord's Prayer. But look at the first verse of Luke chapter 11. It says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he finished, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And I trust that that would be your thinking, teach me to pray. Uh, yes, we know how to pray different ways, different uh, biblical ways. But the idea of continuing to grow in our knowledge and understanding of prayer, you can imagine these disciples being with Jesus for three years uh, and then hearing him pray. Uh, what a blessing that had to be. But also you can see it caused them to say, what? Wow, we just listened to God in the flesh pray perfectly. Pray according to the will of God. Pray seeking the will of God. And so the response is, Lord, we want to pray that way. And I think as you go through Scripture uh, and look at what prayer is, uh, that you want to be thinking, yeah, Lord, teach me to pray. I want to pray not my way not according to what I think prayer should be, but I want to pray like Jesus prayed. I want to pray like the Word of God directs me to pray. And so that's a part of the challenge as well, and to imagine uh, hearing Christ pray uh, and to see Him seeking God's will, bringing the needs of other people, 
before God in prayer. Uh, what a blessing that had to be for them to hear and then challenging them to pray uh, as Jesus did. And so we'll look at this in four different parts. Uh, the first part tonight, understanding God's purpose in prayer. It's not a, a conclusive, everything covered type of look, but it's a reminder of we have to remember God has a purpose for prayer. And it's easy to twist that into something else if we're not careful where prayer then becomes what we want rather than looking at, well, here's God's setup for prayer, what it's supposed to be, what it should mean to me when I pray. So we'll give you some things to think about tonight in relationship to that. Uh, then the next time we'll look at devoting yourself to prayer, uh, to make that commitment before God that, yes, I will devote myself to prayer. And we'll see different people in Scripture, different people in life, how they did it, what it means. Uh, but God desires that his people pray. And so the challenge to me, to you, to our church, uh, is to take that challenge and say, yes, Lord, I will put forth the faith uh, to pray. And then the next two times that we'll meet after that, there'll be practical helps to promote prayer. And we'll do that in two parts. Uh, here's things that you can do literally, uh, things to understand uh, what it means to uh, pray and how you can do more than just praying before the meal or before you fall asleep at night, but putting some time, effort into praying. And as I thought through, you know, you, d you read different ones in history, church history, well, this person prayed three hours a day. Or, you know, this one had this set up for prayer, and it's, it's very impressive, and praise God for it. I, I would start and encourage you, if you're not already doing something on a regular basis, try 15 minutes, uh, along with praying uh, without ceasing during the week, but 15 committed minutes to prayer, and we'll give you some ways to see that uh, brought forth in what to pray for, how to pray, and how to follow God's purpose. So those four uh, sessions, that's what we'll be looking at. Tonight, to understand God's purpose in prayer, uh, just some general thoughts to remind us and to make sure we're on the right track. And what's the normal track for people when it comes to prayer? Uh, most people think prayer is something that they have that they need or want and they have to just come to God and ask for it and then they can expect it to happen that way. And you see it uh, in so many different circles, unsaved people. Uh, they see prayer as being s something that God has given to them to get what they want. And, and I hope you can, if you've ever thought that way, that you can push that out of your thinking and see what God has actually ordained. It's much more, it's much better, and it's what God would have us to pursue. So first thought is God has ordained prayer. Uh, this is God's setup. This is what he has established. It's not what the church has established. It's not what a person has established. Uh, this is what God says he has established, prayer. And the establishment of prayer means that it's a source for supernatural help. Uh, God has set up prayer with the intent that through prayer, his power, his supernatural work will flow into our lives. And you look at the Apostle Paul, Peter, uh, writers of the scripture, especially in the New Testament church, they're constantly asking for what? Prayer. Uh, why? Because they want things? Because they want their will? No, because they want the power of God to be working in their lives, their ministries, in every aspect of their lives. And so that supernatural help being made uh, available to his people is what God has ordained. And it means it's a step of faith to exercise prayer. 
It's faith that leads us to come continually, faithfully before God in prayer, uh, acknowledging we need the power of God to be working. And so you have Paul, you have even our you know, missionaries when they come to church, uh, they will often say what? You know, sign up for a prayer letter. You know, even if you can't support us, sign up for a prayer letter. What is the thinking? Well, they, do they need a list to show their board that they have people? No, their thinking is they understand Scripture, that God has ordained uh, prayer, and they need that supernatural work of God to help them in the ministry God has called them to do. Therefore, they're asking for God's people to pray. And also, uh, Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And there's a lot involved in that statement, but certainly when we recognize there is nothing that we can contribute uh, in our salvation that's of our own strength and wisdom, it should put us on our knees, it should put us in our hearts thinking we need to pray uh, because I can't do it. Uh, we need to pray because I can't grow in the Lord apart from God's work. Therefore, pray. Without me, you can do nothing. But with Christ, with the power from God, we can do all things. And so the part of the answer to understanding uh, without me, you can do nothing is that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes a big difference. Because we're doing something, well, faith, yes, but ultimate it's because God does things as God's people faithfully pray. So it's a source for supernatural help. Also, grace flows through prayer. Uh, Hebrews 4.16, it says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Very clear, scriptural verse from God that we need to approach God in prayer, the throne of grace, because we need the mercy, the grace of God to help us in our time of need. How needy are we? Well, if we understand scripture, I'm very needy. I can't do anything on my own, but through Christ, I can do all things. Therefore, I should want to pray for that grace to enable uh, things in my life to happen, church praying together, so that our thoughts are, we need the grace of God to save souls. We need the grace of God to help people grow in the Lord and to face the needs that they have every day in their lives. So it's a... Uh, source of the grace of God is ordained by God in prayer. And then prayer submits everything in life to God's power. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, we know that verse backwards and forwards. Easy to remember, uh, but not as easy to follow through on. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So when you think of prayer, and here's what God has ordained, the purpose of bringing his power and grace, meeting our needs, uh, we need to recognize that I have to submit uh, to this knowledge, to this understanding, that it needs to be in every area of my life that I'm submitting it, turning it over to God in prayer. And we have a tendency to do what? You know, you little things, eh, we just go along, handle them. The big thing comes, and now we're praying. Uh, Lord, you got to fix this. Lord, I need this, I need that. What does God ordain? He says, I want you to come to me all the time. With every issue in your life, every care, every concern, all that you're trying to do for me, you, you come consistently. And you ask and you submit to God's power. And as you think of why has God ordained this setup, well, if everything is of God, then who gets the glory? God does. And so prayer is acknowledging I need God's help. God's going to answer 
as we pray, and then he's going to get all the glory. So that's one thing to understand in God's purpose in prayer. A second is that God established prayer to our line, our will with his will. And I think many times we miss this, uh, but it's, it's essential to understanding uh, prayer and coming before the Lord. Uh, we are coming before God so that our will then aligns with his will for our lives. And so that's a big part of prayer. And it involves uh, such things as make your requests known to the Lord. Uh, Psalm 55, verse 22, uh, paints a wonderful picture of what it means to make all your requests known to God. It basically says, roll your burden on the Lord. Roll all of your burdens on the Lord. Don't carry them yourself. Don't try to handle them yourself, but roll the burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. And then 1 Peter 5, 7, God says to do what? Cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. So he's, he's calling us uh, to make all of our requests known to him. But it involves the concept, the faith, the belief that as I'm doing that, I'm not coming before God and saying, you know, I have to have these things. You can say, Lord, this is how I hope it works out. Uh, I, I, you know, if I'm sick, I'm praying, Lord, help me to get better. There's nothing wrong with it. But at the same time, we are to seek his will. And in seeking his will, he said, this is the request, this is the care, this is the need, here's the burden, I'm giving it to you. This is how I would like to see it unfold, but your will be done. And you see that in a couple places. John 14, 13, in seeking his will, it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Now, if you read that and don't consider it too much, what does it seem to say? You ask whatever you want and I'll do it. But that's not what it's saying because it's saying if you ask in my name, which is meaning if you ask in my will, according to my will, it will happen. And so it's very important to remember that, that sometimes God will say no, sometimes he'll say wait, or sometimes he'll say, I'm not giving you what you've requested. I'm giving you something different, but it's my will. And my will has a purpose and a plan that is better than what you could uh, desire. And so we have to submit to seeking his will. And Jesus Christ uh, gave us that example uh, as he prayed, headed to the cross. Uh, remember what he said. If this cup can be removed, he would prefer that in his humanity but he said not my will but your will be done and it was God the Father's will for him to go to the cross and he submitted to that and you want to think about that in your prayer life because if you remove that thinking you're going to get very discouraged in your prayer life because you're not getting what you want all the time and so you have to be thinking I'm going to cast all my cares, my burdens to the Lord. I'm going to share my heart. I'm going to share my desires of how I would like things to go. But ultimately, and most importantly, I'm going to say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done, because he knows best. And so that's how we have to be thinking when it comes to prayer. And then there's also the Christ-likeness that is produced in praying for his will to align with our will. Uh, in other words, when we pray like Christ, we'll become more like Christ. And I was thinking of, uh, you know, an illustration struck me with this. One example, if you're praying the way Christ prays and you're seeking God's will over your own, it's going to change who you are. It's going to make you more like Christ. And one of the <laughs> thoughts that I had that's interesting, uh, when we think of people, often we say, well, this person's an optimist, this person's a pessimist. 
uh, this person sees everything as just rosy and is out of touch with reality. This person is such a pessimist that everything's the worst case. And it made me think of, uh, of joke Ronald Reagan. I don't know if you heard his joke about the optimist and the pessimist, but a family had twin boys and the one was the ultimate pessimist the other one was the ultimate optimist and the parents were concerned because neither one seemed to be able to function well because of the extreme pessimism and optimism so they took him to a psychologist and the psychologist said well we're going to try something a practical way of getting them to change and so he said for the pessimist you go buy the best toys you can find put them in his room put them in his bedroom and then when he comes in, he's, he's not going to have anything to complain about. And then for the optimist, you go and you get a big pile of manure, you put it in his room, and when he comes in, that'll straighten out his optimism. And so the parents followed through, and the, they checked on the pessimist. They came into his room thinking, maybe this will change him. And he's sitting in front of his, these incredible toys, and he's crying. And they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He says, I am sure someone's going to steal these or there's going to be a fire. And they're going to get destroyed. So the parents are like, well, that didn't work. So then they go to the second son, the optimist, and they think, well, maybe it'll work for him. They walk into his room. He's in the middle of the pile, and he's throwing it over his shoulder as fast as he can. They say, what are you doing? What are you doing? He says, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. You know? So the point was, it didn't change either one of them. But the point would be this. When you think about change that's needed in your life, like if you're a pessimist and you complain all the time, and God says what? That's, that's sin. That's wrong. How are you going to change that? How's God going to change it? Well, you have to know the Word of God, but also you have to pray. You have to pray, Lord, change this in my life, the way that I think. I want it to be like Christ. I want it to be according to the Word of God. I want it to be change that comes from God, not by my own efforts. And so that's just one example of an area of life of how we see the world and how we respond to circumstances. Uh, if you want to see Christ likeness, it has to include prayer. Uh, it, it has to, because you're saying to the Lord, here's my problem, here's Christ and what I want to be. I need the work of God to make that happen in my life. And so I want my will to be like his will. And so that's, again, something to keep in mind when it comes to improving your prayer life. Prayer is designed by God to help you align your will with God's will. We seek the will of God, we make our requests known, and we ask the Lord to help us become like Christ. And then the third thought is God has commanded prayer. It's his command. Uh, he commands us as a Father in heaven, as the God creator of all things, as the one who is established the idea that I have saved you, now you are my child. And as the Bible says, what does a loving father do? He, he enjoys meeting the needs of his children. And so it's God has commanded us to come in prayer and ask for our needs to be met. And as we said before, how, how great are our needs? It's, you, you can't even, there's nothing we can do on our own. That it's like a child depending on a parent. That's the way we should be thinking, and we should be thrilled with that thought that the Almighty God, who's created all things, saved us and now has given us this gift of prayer and says, you come ask. You come and ask for your needs to be met, and I will meet those needs. And he promises to act on our prayers. Philippians 4.19 it says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How much of your needs? All. 
Uh, how do you express them to the Lord? Yeah, he knows. He sees it all. But he desires that we follow his command and bring those things to him in prayer, uh, submitting to his will, asking for his uh, hand and meeting the needs according to his perfect plan for our lives. So as you think about improving your prayer life, uh, I encourage you to start there. Uh, start with those three thoughts. God has ordained prayer. He's established it to align our will with his. He's commanded it and promised to meet all of our needs.